Hello everyone, my name is Nikita Genze and I'm a PhD student at the Bioinformatics Lab at the Tom Campus Straubing for Biotechnology and Sustainability. I'm happy to give you a short introduction to my PhD project. In the next couple of minutes I will talk about the topic Deep Learning Based Early Read Segmentation Using UAV Images of Sorghum Fields. As for the structure of the talk, I will start with the aim and the main idea of the project. Then I will summarize the current state and conclude with a short outlook. In this project, we focus on the crop sorghum because it is drought resistant and heat tolerant, which makes it a good alternative crop with respect to climate change. However, sorghum is very delicate to early wheat infestation. Conventionally, farmers would spray tons of herbicides into open fields, which has a negative impact on the environment. Nowadays, more and more field robots are used to remove weeds more precisely, but they are very slow as they need to move through every single field row. Drones or UAVs can capture the whole field way faster and retrieve useful information about the presence and location of weeds. In this project, we aim to segment weeds in UAV images and localize weed patches, especially in the early growth stages of sorghum. In the long term, this might help reduce herbicide usage and save resources. The main idea can be divided into four steps. First, a consumer-grade drone is taken to capture images of a field. Then, the images are labeled to provide some ground truth. Next, several deep learning models are trained. Finally, the model can be used to predict and automatically detect weeds in new drone images. Now I will talk about the current state of those four steps. First, I want to mention the main challenges in UAV flights. In this slide, I will show some example images captured by a drone at a height of 5 meters. One main challenge is the diversity of the weeds present in the fields. Also, there are many occlusions between the plants. And there is lots of foliage and artifacts in the UAV captures. In this image we can see the shadow of the drone and the bird's feather. Some other challenges arise because of abiotic vectors. For example, the sun has a big impact on illumination, which leads to differences in exposure and color temperature. Also, hard shadows are visible in these captures, which can be seen in this image. Another factor is the wind, which has a huge effect, especially on consumer-grade UAVs, leading to motion blur and changes in the plant's shape. We focused on UAV images with motion blur in our first experiments, as this is one major difficulty and a realistic scenario in future applications. When working with these models, the first step is to create a ground truth that can be compared with the model's predictions. We are using models to segment drone captures semantically. This means that we need to label each pixel of an image into their respective class. We decided to use three classes. The background class contains the field, foliage and artifacts and is denoted in grey. The weed class contains all weed species denoted in orange and the sorghum class is denoted in blue. Before training a model, we need to prepare the data. First, the labeled drone captures are split into several patches. We used a size of 256 by 256 pixels and obtained almost 5000 patches containing around 3000 sorghum plants and 2700 wheat plants. Then all these patches were divided into three non-overlapping sets, training, a validation and a testing set. The first two were used to learn the parameters of the model. The test set was only used to check the generalization capabilities on new data. Deep learning models for semantic segmentation are usually built of convolutional pooling and unpooling layers. Also, so-called skip connections are used to obtain a high-resolution prediction. In this talk, I will not go into much detail, but I still want to outline the main aspects. The model consists of an encoder part to extract useful features from the images. A feature is just a characteristic of an image, for example corners or edges. A decoder is then used to retrieve the spatial resolution that got lost in the encoding. So by using an image patch as input to the model, the prediction will have the same size as the input but labeled with a semantic meaning. By utilizing the manually labeled ground truth, we can compute the error with respect to the prediction and gradually improve the model. This way we can train a model to distinguish between weed and crop that can generalize to new images. The first semantic segmentation models that were trainable end-to-end -end are fully convolutional networks, in short FCNs. 
Over the time, these models were improved using zero techniques, which led to more sophisticated state-of-the-art models like DeepLab V3. In the following, I will present some results obtained with these models. We compared the FCN architecture with DeepLab V3 using our drone captures with motion blur. Also, we compared two feature extractors that differ in depth. In our case, the simplest architecture FCN with the smallest feature extractor ResNet50 obtained the best results on the validation set with less than 5% error. The best performing model was then used to generate predictions for the Holtel test set to measure the generalization capabilities. Our model achieved very promising results with a F1 score of almost 87%. The F1 score is a commonly used measure reaching from 0 to 100% that describes the accuracy of a model in one number. We can take a closer look at the predictions using a confusion matrix. Here we compare the ground truth to the prediction on a pixel basis by separating all classes. The correct predictions are shown in the diagonal. The other values are confusions where the model misclassifies them pixels. We can see in the left column that the model predicted pixels falsely as background. For example, almost 25% of all wheat pixels were not found and thus predicted as background. Further analysis showed that the majority of confusions are located at the outline of the plant. Here two example patches are shown with their corresponding ground truth and prediction. The last column shows the difference between the ground truth and prediction and is just colored to be viewed more easily. One can see that the general shape is predicted correctly. Also, weeds that intersect with the crop can be detected using this model. In the current work, we can show that this is possible to distinguish weeds from sorghum plants in degraded UAV captures. Here we focused on one UAV mission where only one weed species was dominant. For a more robust model, we need to incorporate a large variety of weed species. The main problem here lies in the scaling, as the weed composition is changing from field to field and also over time. One would need to find and label those weed species which can be scarce now but might be dominant in a future production setting. It would be more convenient to have a database of plant species captured in a controlled environment, for example a greenhouse. Here we can grow and label specific weed species more easily, but the main question is how to combine these two data sources. Or in other words, is it possible to train a model on greenhouse images only and reliably apply it to a wide variety of UAV captures? In future work, I will focus on this research question. In the meantime, I want to thank you for the attention. Also, big thanks to all project partners and students who worked with me on this topic. Special thanks to the Bavarian State Ministry for Food, Agriculture and Forestry, who funded this project.